Hey everyone, I hope you're all doing great today, and I hope you enjoy these stories. I really enjoyed narrating these because I find gas station stories really interesting. Especially because obviously it's more scary, the idea of working out in the middle of nowhere with no one around you. But let me know what you thought of them. Make sure you check out the podcast in the description and check out my Patreon where you can gain early access to all my videos. I also want to share this quickly before the video starts. I think it's very important when dealing with mental health or related issues that you set goals for yourself and always have something to work on and focus on because that's what's going to help carry you through the good and bad days because I know that not every day is going to go perfect and be great and there's going to be bad days that you need to ride out but I think it's very important to still have a goal and focus in mind that you can focus on because otherwise it's easier to get lost in the bad days if you don't have anything going on. It's something I found has really helped me and it's okay for these goals to change. They don't have to be big goals and don't worry if you don't achieve them. It's just important to have them and of course you're going to achieve some and I think it's quite rewarding so I hope that makes a difference for some people and I hope you have a great day and enjoy these stories. Take care. I grew up in a smaller town of around 6,000 people and my family frequently went out at night to go on walks and such. We'd never seen people out and always felt safe, so it was never a thought in my mind that something bad would happen. My parents always lectured us about not talking to strangers and being safe, especially since I'm a rather short girl, also was around 16 or 17 at the time. We moved to a town that's actually much larger a couple of years ago which had a bad reputation. Now one night, my mum's boyfriend had a bad stomach ache and my mum's car wasn't working so she asked me if I would go and get some Tums from the nearby gas station, which wasn't even 5 minutes away. I said yeah, because I don't mind. I knew he wasn't feeling great at all. It was around 10.30 now, and dark out, I mean super dark. I pull into the gas station and go to the park entrance and I can actually see a guy in a hoodie standing by the front door shielding his eyes from the lights. The thing is, the headlights aren't bright at all, even when my brights are on so I knew something was up immediately. I got out, made sure I locked my door and hurried in. They didn't even have any tums or anything so I leave quickly hurrying back to my truck. I notice that the guy is gone, and there was now a car parked directly next to mine, even though there's so many different places to park. I quickly get in and shut the door, and something told me to lock my door. Not even a second later the guy comes from behind the other car trying to open mine, banging on the window screaming at me to let him in. I turn my truck on and sped out of there, shaking like a leaf. Ended up getting the Tums at another gas station, but I will never go to a gas station at night on my own again. I hate the feeling of knowing what could have happened if I didn't lock my doors. Now twice I've had super bad vibes pulling into a gas station. A while ago, I had an early flight leaving at 6am. So I was driving off to the airport parking and was very low on gas. I pulled into a gas station close to the airport at around 4am. The station was poorly lit and I noticed there's two guys sitting outside drinking and a third guy comes out. But I was the only one at the pumps. When the third guy starts walking to my car, I realise how vulnerable I am. I drove away immediately without getting gas. Just last week, I was returning a rental car to a location in Philadelphia and needed to top up on gas. The only gas station was one that wasn't very close to where I was driving. When we eventually pulled up to the gas station, my eyes went wide. Every single pump was vandalised, broken or missing panels and signs. There was broken glass all over the parking lot. All of the doors were shuttered except for the front lone door and a weak open light. We drove right through without stopping and just returned the car without ever filling up the tank. When I was about seven or so, 
I got really sick and ended up staying in the hospital for a day or so. When I finally start feeling better, my dad was allowed to take me home so picked me up that night. It was probably just around midnight and on the way home we stopped at a gas station. While I sat in the truck waiting for my dad to return, some guy opened the driver's side door and got in. I'm pretty sure he's about to steal the truck, that is, until he realises I'm sitting there. He panicked and said something like, oh I'm just checking the time, then got out and left. About two minutes later my dad got back and life was good. For whatever reason, I don't mention what happened to him until years later. But looking back, I could have easily been kidnapped or something worse. When I was younger, I worked at a gas station as an attendant. I was really hoping to do a good job as I had to impress my supervisor, but I had a few things go wrong that made him lose faith in me. One of the scariest was that there was a crazed local that drove by the station. He would actually hide out across the road. Sometimes he would start shooting at pumps. My boss was convinced that he was aiming for me, but it seemed like I was an untargeted person and he was just trying to shoot our supplies. Paint cans and oil cans would take the most damage. I still can't figure out why he was doing this, but my god, if there was an explosion, I would be done. Not the most terrifying story, but it creeps me out when it happened a few years ago. I had just packed up the majority of my life into my car and was driving from Georgia to move back to New Hampshire where I grew up. I had stuff packed to the ceiling in the car and so could only really see out of the window to the left. I was asleep at a rest stop in the middle of nowhere after many hours of driving. A couple of hours into my restless sleep, in my seat that couldn't recline at all due to the stuff in my car, I feel my car rocking a bit. But I'm deep enough in a sleep that I convince myself that everything's fine. But the rocking persists. Earlier in the night, Long story short, when it had been pouring with rain, I had wrecked a tyre very badly because I didn't stop because of the road conditions and it's gone flat, and ended up having to put a spare donut on. Which is the main reason I decided to stop here, to wait for a local mechanic to open up so I can buy a new tyre and continue on my journey. So anyway, my car is rocking back and forth when I get sudden jolts of adrenaline realising that my car shouldn't be doing this. It's just barely morning light as I jump up to see what's happening and I can't see anything because all of my belongings are actually blocking the view and there stands someone who is parked next to me in a mostly empty parking lot holding a tire iron. They sheepishly tell me something I can't remember saying oh we're just checking and wondered if I want to trade the donut with theirs because theirs doesn't fit well enough or something. Now deep in the state of sleep stupor, where I can't string two thoughts together, I asked them if they're touching my car while I was inside. They say no, and although I wasn't clear-headed enough to be able to understand what was happening, or whether I should help them, I was sharp enough to understand that they've just lied to me. I was aware of how vulnerable and defenseless I was in that situation. I jumped back into my car as quickly as I can, and drive quickly off to another area where I can find a mechanic to fix my car and then I can stay in the parking lot there. I was working at a chain gas station and this guy walks in and comes to the counter with four very large alcoholic beverages. I can see he's already lit and I started to talk to him a bit. I was hoping he was living around the block or something, but he calmly states he's on his way somewhere that was easily three or four hours away. I thought to myself, oh no you're not. I call the police and report him as a drunk driver. They got him and he blew over three times the legal limit. I probably saved his life that night. I showed up to the court date and he took the plea deal. They threw the book at him too. I was scared because... I had never actively tried to do something like that before 
and I'm glad I did it too. I've probably saved others' lives as well as his. So I was working at a gas station, and this lady came in through the front door asking why she's having problems out of the pumps. She'd clicked the lean over the nozzle that keeps the gas pump in, but then somehow managed to pull the nozzle out of her car's receptacle, not knowing what she was doing. She walked to the door and told me about it. I thought she'd spilled a little gas on the pad, but no, she left the nozzle on the ground, spilling out gallons upon gallons. By the time I got there, it was a pool of flammable liquid. My god, I shut down the pumps and evacuate the area. Call the fire department. I say no ma'am, just get in your car and drive away, don't touch anything. The FD showed up and said wow, we've never seen anything this bad. Fortunately the gas station didn't blow up. It took actually hours to clean up the mess in the middle of an Arizona summer in 100 degree heat. I was driving through the Midwest going up to visit Mount Rushmore. I was taking minor highways most of the time because I enjoy scenic drives, but I get low on gas in western Nebraska. I drove with my gas light on for about another 20 miles, find nothing but empty fields until I finally see a sign for a town called Powside. I turn in and see probably the most podunk town I've ever seen, and I live in the country, seriously, there's not a single car on the roads and only a couple parked randomly. I pull into a small single pump gas station and notice there's no credit card input for the pump, no big deal, I thought, so I turned and tried to get into the small service shack that was by it, but the door was locked and the lights are out. I look through the window and the shack was completely empty like it's been abandoned. I got into my car and try my luck going to the next town, but my wife told me that she needed to use the restroom. So I drove down Main Street past boarded up windows and empty stores and parked at the local post office. It's closed. I was 30 minutes too late, so I started to tell her that there was absolutely nothing open in this town when I saw a door that consisted of plywood instead of glass on a shop that had a busted out window and a couple of people carrying a bag. So walked over while being stared at the whole time by the people who came out and pulled open the plywood door and entered a narrow, extremely dark, dirty, disorganized, particularly unstocked country store, which employed a single worker at the front who was a bigger guy. He's burly wearing a greasy set of overalls and a trucker's hat. It's a little hard to describe, but kind of like someone out of a horror film. I asked the guy behind the counter if there's a restroom that we could use, but he either had trouble hearing what I was saying or trouble understanding. I completely said the same thing twice until finally he understood and told me in the thickest country accent possible that it's in the back. He then repeats himself, giving an extremely detailed direction of how I could get to it, when I can literally see it where I'm standing. He then proceeds to repeat himself for a third time, going into peculiar detail, explaining things I may face on the floor and ceiling when I go in there. I finally thank him and walk to the back, and sure enough, there were dirty dusty boxes of empty used cleaning supplies thrown about everywhere like he had described to me along with other things on the floor and ceiling. I opened it and the site made a truck stop bathroom look like a palace. Luckily my wife did not notice the half dozen roaches scurrying off, probably because of the darkness, but she did notice mould everywhere and the puddle of an unknown substance on the floor and the fifty or so empty toilet paper rolls thrown about on the floor. I ask her if she's okay and she suddenly told me that, yeah I'm fine, I really need to go. I started walking around the store while constantly being silently stared at by the front guy. I grab a bottle of water to buy. I always wanted to buy something if I used the restroom of a place. My wife then comes out of the restroom. I told him that 
we did everything we needed, and I paid for the water and leave with him staring at us. As we walked out, there were a few people across the street having a conversation, but immediately stop and stare at us. So I ignore them the best I can, got in the car, and start driving off. But I noticed a car parked at the one pump as I passed it fueling. I did not care though. I just got out of that town and gone as quick as I could into the next one over. I eventually ran out of gas, but luckily I've made it to another pump. So we were driving to Virginia in the early 90s. It was about midnight and my father pulls into a rest stop as my mum needs to use the bathroom. He dropped her off in front and went to park. I made my way inside and stopped. A huge man had my tiny mother over his shoulder and was calmly walking to the other exit. My mother didn't make a sound. I will never forget the look on her face which is shocked mixed with fear. I screamed so loud my father who's just come in saw what was happening, ran after the man. The dude then put my mother down and just walked out of the building. We sat in the car waiting for the police to arrive. My mum said he grabbed her soon after she walked in. He was inside the ladies room, apparently waiting for a victim. The lights were off and my mum walked in. We spent a night at a nearby motel. My parents went to the police station in the morning so my mum could try and identify him but can't find anyone. We made a new rule in my family. No one could use a rest stop bathroom without at least one other family member being there. I was with my dad on our way to New York City and we stopped at a gas station very early in the morning around 8am. I was very young at the time, around 7, and I was sitting in the back seat of the car with my Walkman and headphones on, playing Pokemon Red on my Game Boy Color. As I'm sitting there, he goes inside to pay for the gas and get a few snacks for the trip. During this, a very, very old man walks over to the car opens the door and sits in the front seat. I had no idea, being so young, what was happening, so I just sat there. After about three minutes of this, a 40-year-old man runs out of the gas station screaming, There's something wrong with the car! The man still sat there. He says, Come on! Get out! I'm so sorry, this is my father and he's a little confused. After a few more attempts, the man finally gets up, and to this day, I still have no idea why I didn't say anything. I actually had multiple weird experiences in my years working as a gas station attendant. Now, I lived in one of the gas stations that's basically in the middle of nowhere. I mean, I had to drive at least 45 minutes to get there, which doesn't sound like much, but you imagine if you're driving and all you can see is trees around you and fields. With the way this gas station was set up, it wasn't like a chain one. It was privately owned, and that meant they didn't like spending money if they didn't have to. So I would almost always be working there alone. Now we would get the odd weird people that would come in on a regular basis. There was one particularly strange woman who would speak another language break into perfect English, then start trying to give you a lollipop. She would do this to all the other workers who would try and ignore her, just trying to get a hot chocolate, but she would always end up thrusting the lollipop into them. If not, she would just throw it into their faces. Now, I wasn't really big enough to be able to deal with this myself, and annoyingly nobody else helped her or got her out of the building for me, so we usually waited until she left. There was another very bizarre person who would wear very heavy winter clothes whenever it was hot outside or in the middle of summer. He would have sunglasses too and always wore exactly the same clothes on. You would see him multiple times a day and I just don't understand how he was walking so far or where he was going. Maybe he was a crazy guy who lived out in the woods but I presume he was just an alcoholic. 
but you can imagine seeing somebody walking past every single day with the exact same clothes on, walking like they're on a mission, never actually acknowledging anyone. I went outside to smoke once and he actually completely ignored me, which I thought was really strange because I did try and make efforts to talk to him and he always glances over at me. One of the weirdest people I'd seen too was when I went outside to smoke at about 2am at night quickly. And don't worry, I wasn't near the actual pump, so it was safe. And no one was in the shop too, so I was actually doing my job fine. So there's this guy that screams at me from the side of the road. What time is it? I drop my cigarette and just freeze. What time is it? What does he mean? He shouts again. I turn to my left and I can see that he's carrying a really big box of sticks. Literally just sticks you'd find on the ground. I tell him this time and he says thank you. He then repeats this three or four times as he's walking into the distance. He literally continues this until I can't see him anymore. Yeah, pretty weird. One that actually scared me the most though was a time that my car had broken down and I was waiting for one of my friends to come and fix it. I'd already finished my shift and the other worker had actually taken over and was in the shop so I could just wander around for a bit. I guess being stuck in the same place makes you start to lose your mind, so I just have a walk along the road. There was one particular route that I would always follow which led to an abandoned church. I never actually went inside it, but it was a nice walk and you didn't feel too scared there at night for some reason. Maybe I'd lost my mind to all the weirdo interactions I had, but anyway, I'd walked about 20 minutes down the road when out of the corner of my eye, I can see a strange torchlight. Now it's not like a conventional flashlight, it's more like an actual flame. It's about half a mile away from me, but I can see it. Just as I'm stopping to figure out what this is, thinking maybe it's a car or something in the tree line, I realise there's multiple of these, and they're all walking in one direction. Now I can tell they're people because of the way that this bobs up and down. But I can't make out much else because it's pitch black now between me and them. And what's worse is I'm under a street light so they're definitely going to be able to see me. They don't make a sound but there's probably about 10 of them at least all walking in the same direction about an equal distance away from each other. I don't take time to try and figure out what this is. I tried to take a picture but you can't actually see anything because it's so far away and the night mode is so bad on my phone. I decide to quickly hurry back. I report what's happened to my friend and he says, yeah, you see some crazy things out here, but this is the last that I'd ever seen of them. Now, I wanted to tell you them just to give you an idea of how many weird people are actually out here where I was working. For some reason though, I was pretty fearless to it all. Now, there was one night in particular that I'll never forget when I was working. Every so often, I would hear a scream sound coming from behind where I was. It's hard to describe exactly what it was. I was pretty sure it was an animal, but I couldn't be sure. Needless to say, I didn't go outside to smoke that night. It was terrifying, but eventually went to normal because I got used to it. Even one of the local weirdos that come in mentioned it to me and said it was really strange. I said, yeah, I know. Thinking, well, maybe this guy's actually normal. He immediately said to me, did you see the police chase and all the helicopters and cars going past? No, I didn't. Crazy. He said, yeah, it was literally two minutes ago. How did you miss it? Grabs his stuff and runs off. There was definitely no police chase, at least. But at least somebody else had heard what was happening. Everything goes back to normal, and I forget about the screaming sounds. Eventually my shift is over, and somebody comes to take over from me and says, Hey, have you seen what the police are doing? I say, what police? Flashing back to my interaction earlier, I think maybe that guy was correct, and maybe, just maybe, there was something going on. I quickly head outside, and we can see multiple police all surrounding a building that I didn't even notice was there. These are full SWAT police, or I think they are. They've all got guns drawn, and they're hiding in the woods and in the fields. 
I can also see sniper squads there. I can't believe what I'm seeing. I don't know what's happening and my friend doesn't too. I stayed for about another 30 minutes trying to figure out what was going on from my car. I can see the police slowly advancing on this building but I have no idea what they were doing. Eventually I drive home and I met by my mother who tells me, God, thank God you're okay. I've been calling you for hours trying to see if you're alright. I say, what has happened? She says, somebody took someone hostage in that building just next to where you worked and the police have just rescued them. They sent firing squads in and sniper teams to try and save them. I suddenly realised the screams that I heard must have come from a woman who had been kidnapped. The whole time, I was completely oblivious to it and thought it was a normal animal sound or someone's being held hostage. It's an experience that I've never forgot since this day, but what really worries me is that I was walking around that place multiple times on my own at night, not realising that within the following day somebody was about to get kidnapped. I was going to hear it and not realise what was happening, and I thought they were normal sounds. Every single time I look at that building now, I get flashbacks and get chills down my spine knowing what took place there. I'm going to quit my job soon too because I don't like working that close to somewhere like that. Thank god it didn't happen to me in that gas station. I think the only thing that was a saving grace for me is the fact that multiple people weird or not go into the gas station and maybe whoever done this thought there was cameras there but there's none. Since this day I've always been much more cautious and always had my phone next to me so if anything like that happens again I can quickly call the police. I work as a cashier at a grocery store and nothing about this night would have stuck out to me if it wasn't for this event. I had till 7pm to close shift and the store closed at 12am. I clock in and everything's the same old. However, early in my shift, I had a younger guy, probably mid-twenties, come in. He grabs a soda from the cooler. Nothing special that sticks out in my mind. So my break time comes around 9pm. I go to the back to lock out and then head out. I go to call my boyfriend at the time and as I'm walking out, I saw the same younger guy that I rang up the soda for over an hour ago at the lottery ticket machine. Okay, whatever. He's bored. It's not uncommon to see the same customer coming back for a second time. I make my call and my break's about to go up so I clock back in. I get on my lane and look over to the lottery machine and he's gone. Fast forward about 30 minutes before closing, I'm cleaning up. And guess who I see over at the same machine? Yep, shady soda guy. We make brief eye contact and he walks out the store. Over the next 15 minutes, I get so busy cleaning and making sure that the store is ready for the day shift that I forget all about the soda guy. Time to clock out so I do so. I usually wait and walk out with the office checker and the security guard, but on this particular shift, I don't know the security guard and don't care too much for the office checker on duty so I walk out without waiting. As I get out, I head to my minivan. As per company policy, I head to park at the end of the lot so customers can get closer to the store. As I make it halfway to my van, I see a weird blacked out car taking up two spaces in front of my van. And there's another in the distance. I start walking up faster with my key in hand. As I get closer to the car, I see four people in the car. Then two doors open, and somebody steps out, wearing all black, the soda guy. By the grace of God, or whatever you believe in, before they fully got out of the car, 
the security officer checker come walking out of the store and they quickly get back in their car literally speeding off. I don't even see a license plate. The security guard stopped and looked at me like he didn't know what was going on. I was freaking out so rushed the rest of the way home, crying my eyes out. My brain, even after all these years, doesn't know how to process this. Was I overreacting? Was I about to be abducted? I still don't like thinking about it because it makes me tear up. 